Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're continuing our series on how to select fur, this time with a different tool, Affinity Photo. Just as in Pixelmator, we'll try to put Fido here on a snazzier background. Please stick around till the end as I'll come to a conclusion which tool I think is better for selecting fur, Affinity or Pixelmator. So how do we select this dog here? I'm going to begin by drawing a rough selection outline around the dog. Unlike Pixelmator, there is no select subject AI based tool to fast track this process. So we have to do it the manual way. Not an issue, there's no need for the initial selection to be perfect. You can use the selection brush or polygonal selection. I'll use the polygonal selection. So I'm going to just click on the disclosure button on this freehand selection tool here. And I'm going to choose freehand selection tool. And I'm going to choose the polygonal selection. As you've seen from my previous videos, in the polygonal selection, you simply have to trace a path to form the selection. So you just have to click on the points in the path. Once again, this does not have to be perfect. And there you go. So you can see the marching ants here. So the selection is done. Not a great looking selection, but we're going to be fixing that. Once the selection is done, Affinity provides a specific set of tools for refining masks, and you can access that through the aptly named Refine button, which when you click will bring us to a dialog with a bunch of settings. So let's just click the Refine button here. And there you go. So you can see the unselected portions have a red overlay, while the selected portions do not have the overlay. So this dialog requires a little bit of explanation. I would skip through the first four sliders here because this actually will do some global adjustments. So as you can see, it's not very effective. For selecting fur, most of the work done is actually in the adjustment brush. So let's learn a little bit about the settings of the adjustment brush. So the adjustment brush has a few settings. The most important option here is the matte option because this will attempt to separate the foreground and the background automatically. With Affinity Photo, there's no need to specify explicitly foreground or background. That's a bit different from Pixelmator Pro's dialog, because in Pixelmator Pro, its refined edge requires you to specify foreground and background. Now in case matte doesn't work, you can explicitly specify the area you're clicking as a foreground or a background. This dialog also has a feather option, which softens the alpha edge of the selection. I just normally leave this at the default. All right, so let's begin the selection process here. So as I said, the most useful tool is matte. So we're gonna keep the setting on matte, and then we're going to choose a relative large brush. So you can adjust the width here, or you can just use the bracket keys. What you wanna do here is just brush over the edges, and hopefully Affinity will give us the correct result. Let's just paint over the edges here. So as you can see, the refine mask does help, even though it is not perfect, but it is doing the job. Let's just do that throughout the image. So as you can see, I've been using matte throughout. Now, in some cases here, you see that the selection is actually incorrect. A lot of the areas here, which should be part of the foreground, is not included. So what we can do here is we can specify foreground. And what you want to do is just select somewhere around the edge of this misselection here, this mask here in red, so to help it fix it. So the foreground here will identify, based on your selection, which other areas are the foreground. So let's just click on this. So you can see that it crawled through this area here. Let's just see that again. Let's just undo that. Okay, so if I click on this edge area here, you see that it'll crawl through this area and make it a foreground. Okay, so that's pretty useful. Let's just do that for those areas which are still not part of the foreground. Okay, so this one is causing an error right here. Let's try background see if that will fix that. Let's just select on the background area and see if it will crawl over. 
And there you go. So that looks a little bit better. So here there is still some red areas here. Let's just again set this as foreground and let's just There you go. You see it, it deleted that pretty quickly. Correcting here the background because the background doesn't seem to be exactly right. So I've set it to background and I'm just selecting in the adjacent areas which are a background. This part here again is supposed to be in the foreground so I'm just going to click foreground here. And then I'm just going to select in the adjacent area near here and hopefully it will it will fix that unselected area. Well, there you go. You see how that, that nicely fixed it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at it in greater detail and see if there's anything else we can fix here. So what I'm going to do here is just click Apply. Okay, so you can see the selection now is made. What you can do here is just create a mask so that it will allow our background to show through. So let's just click here, Mask. There you go. That's Command D or Control D to remove the selection. And you can see now the nice selection that it is. Now you can inspect the selection further. As you can see, the mask is created. So if you want to view the mask and edit the mask, you can do that. So you simply have to option click the mask here. And you can see how nicely the fur has been selected. Now if there are any errors, you can further edit this if you wish. So I'm just going to choose the paintbrush here. And I'm just going to choose a white brush here. Let's just fix some of these things like so. See if there's anything else that we can fix. The black areas, let's just fix that. So it's just another option for you to make the mask even better. Sometimes it's easier to see the errors when you view it in this black and white mask. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now the final thing you need to do is to do a decontamination. If you watch my previous video with Pixelmator Pro, you know that it has a decontamination feature. Let's remind ourselves what decontaminate colors is. So decontaminate colors is used when you remove the background from an image. The object left behind can often have traces of the previous background around its edges. So looking at this image, if you look closely, you see that the hair here has remnants of the previous background. So you can see as I hide the mask, the mask is in blue and some of these remnants are in the selection, which are quite difficult to remove. So in Pixelmator Pro, it has a decontaminate colors feature. Now unfortunately, for Affinity Photo, there is no decontaminate colors button. And this decontaminate colors is also present in Photoshop, by the way. So it's unfortunate that Affinity Photo does not have it. However, Affinity Photo recommends choosing a particular output, which will do the step of decontamination. So what is this step? So what we want to do is go back to the Refine tool because we can access this particular output from there. So how do we go back? All you need to do is to command click or control click the mask and that will bring back the selection. And then the next step here would be to click on a selection tool like so and then just click on refine. So as you can see, this tool has a bunch of outputs. By default, it is set to selection. Now in order to have that decontamination feature or something close to it, what you want is to choose new layer with mask. All right, new layer with mask. Now what is new layer with mask? So new layer with mask is the last option. This applies the refinement to the selection as a mask in a new layer. Now based on the forums and some responses from Affinity Photo, this new layer with mask is the one which has some decontaminate color function built in. Why that is so, I do not know but uh, that's what the forum says. And so let's try that now. So we're going to select our output now as the fourth one, which is new mask with layer. And hopefully there will be an improvement. So if I click on that and I'll click apply, you will see that a new layer will be generated. There it is. So the new layer will be generated. Now let's compare the difference.
And you can see now that the blue has actually disappeared. So this particular output, for whatever reason, does have some decontaminate colors feature. So there you have it. That's how you select fur in Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo's tools are pretty good for this type of task. But you might ask, which one do I think is better, Affinity Photo or Pixelmator, for selecting fur? In my opinion, after using both tools extensively, while Affinity has the better refined brush tool, because it auto-selects the foreground and background, I would give the edge to Pixelmator Pro because of its AI-based select subject, which makes it so much faster to make a complicated selection. As you've seen in my Pixelmator Pro video, even difficult cases like this with complicated backgrounds, Pixelmator Pro's select subject AI is so good, it can do most of the job in one click, while it would take several minutes in Affinity, if it can do the job at all. That's my opinion of it, but I'd like to know what you think. Do you think Pixelmator Pro is better for selecting fur or Affinity Photo? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.